The 20th anniversary of NITAC, the National Institutes of Health Acquisition and Assessment Center, will be celebrated in 2016. What was the genesis of this IT procurement department nearly two decades ago? How has it evolved? And what might the future hold in store for the NITAC nation? The answers to these questions and other perspectives coming up with our very special guest, the Director of the Office of Acquisition and Logistics Management and the Head of Contracting Activity at the National Institutes of Health, Diane Frazier. Hello, I'm Todd Schwartzrock, and welcome to NITAC Now, brought to you from the Department of Health and Human Services broadcast studios here in Washington, D.C. The NITAC program marks the 20th anniversary in 2016. While the IT procurement environment has evolved over the past two decades, what's been a singular constant over that period of time is the lady at the helm of NIH contracting activity. She's with us today. Welcome to the program, Diane. Good morning, Todd. Thank you so much. Diane, thanks for being with us. 20 years is a considerable period of time for a procurement office that has maintained a high level of integrity and kind of grown in stature. You've steered the NITAC program from its inception. What would you say are some of the highlights of that experience in leading the NITAC? I think one of the highlights is that back in 1996, when these contracts were first awarded, they were done so under the, the efforts of two individuals who took it upon themselves, recognizing that there was some major changes in ac the acquisition process. There was acquisition streamlining and acquisition reform, and they recognized the issues that had made headlines from other agencies regarding IT procurements, the length of time that it took to acquire IT. In an industry that is extremely flexible and responsive, we needed to make sure that we had an organization that reflected that industry and then to create a series of contracts that would be helpful to the government, the federal government, not just NIH, primarily NIH because of our medical research mission, but also our administrators and all people in administrative positions throughout the federal government. So we created vehicles that focused on IT services and then a vehicle that, that focused on IT hardware and related services. Thank you. Interesting perspective. Sometimes it's educational to hear what your peers are saying about your program. Let me share with you one of NITAC's customers, Stephen Cooper, the CIO at Commerce, had to say recently. I grew up in the private sector before I came to public service. I want to be treated as a customer. All of you guys do too. Do you go back to stores, restaurants, places of business that treat you maybe not so well? I, unless you're a glutton for punishment, I don't, I don't think anybody does that, right? You want to go where everybody knows your name, right? Remember that? From Cheers. Okay, so we chose to partner with, with NITEC, with Rob's organization. They've been terrific. They move quickly, agility, speed. They guided us in how to kind of fill out all the forms, stuff that we needed to comply with and everything, which is not a negative. Yes, rules, regulations, we all have to follow it, that's great. But they helped guide my team in doing that so that in essence, Remember that 17 organization thing that I live with otherwise? We kind of moved fairly smoothly through the agreements that needed to be put in place, both for the interagency agreement and then the task orders that now are moving through NIH and through CIO SP3, small business, large business, whatever, whatever vehicle you know, within the subgroups that we choose to move through. Okay. Diane, as you mentioned, and we just saw Steve Cooper is a terrific evangelist for transformational change in federal IT procurement. Just hearing his description of NITAC, the speed, customer service, the agility, the operational excellence, how have you been able to construct an organization with those characteristics, that reputation? It's, it's different. Again, um, reflecting the industry itself, making sure that we always stay one step ahead, taking the innovations from IT and incorporating that into the organization. So one, making sure that we have a top-notch staff, 
that is customer focus, that is willing to listen to the customer needs and to provide um, advice when, when needed, uh, making sure that in addition to complying with the, with the acquisition regulations, also looking at how we can do things better and working with our, our, our peers. There are other agencies that do provide similar services, making sure that we are keeping touch with them and seeing um, how they are operating, but then also looking at where we can be one step ahead. For instance, we have a system, electronic system, that is um, promoted for the use of the vehicles where you can do everything electronically and to, to order anything from the NITAC vehicles. Making sure that we are staying um, abreast of, of our customers, reaching out to customers, and very much important, listening to our customers. You mentioned the, the, the program, the three main vehicles, and I wonder if you can characterize the scope of what these mean to the federal IT community and a little bit about that community itself and how it can address IT needs within the federal government. So with our services contract, our chief information officer, solution and partners, we are looking at um, items such as what is that IT process, looking at re-engineering the, the process, providing support such as telecommunications, imaging, um, security, IT security, which of course has become a key, key um, issue um, within the federal government. And what's great about our program is that we didn't just add that today. If you look back to our original statement of work back in 1996, you see IT security. Um, so again, looking at that full breadth of what is involved in IT, working with our internal CIO community. When we're looking at, at hardware, um, we're looking at the chief information officers, commodity and solutions. And this has gone, undergone a transformation from our earlier contract. So we're not just focused on what are the latest laptops and desktops out there, but we're also looking at the software um, that's associated with with uh, that that particular those particular needs of the IT community. So it's very comprehensive, and I think nearly future proof, as you've had the vision to describe it that way. Speaking of that kind of uh, objective, I'd like to share another brief comment from CIO Cooper explaining what really matters to federal customers. Let's listen. The faster that I can get a solution in place that enables my operating units to deliver on their mission, everybody wins. Everybody wins. It's all about, if I, and I've told my secretary every time I get asked about, you know, Steve, what are the IT metrics and performance metrics, and no offense to OMB, you know, we measure IT metrics. Listen carefully, I could care less about IT metrics. You can quote me on that. I could care less about IT metrics. Am I accountable for that? Yes, absolutely. I am not saying don't hold me accountable. I am not saying I'm not responsible. What I'm saying is that's the wrong stuff to measure. It's the wrong stuff to measure. The right measure, speed to solution delivery. How fast can I get these solutions enabled by the stuff that I do and the men and women of, of the CIO organizations across government, the faster that we can put solutions in place for our operating units, the faster quality with speed, the faster they can effect their mission. Diane, we just heard Steve talk about what he believes is his responsibility as a federal IT leader. He's made NITAC his partner in enabling his team's mission success, hasn't he? Yes, he has, and that's very important to us. And that's reflective of, of course, Steve's leadership, but also reflective of the program itself. Again, that key component of listening to our customers and recognizing what they need. And while the contracts are awarded now, this process of getting to the award is also a process of listening. If you look at the way that we actually solicited, um, we issued a draft solicitation, giving industry an opportunity to review and to provide their expertise. 
and then looking at those comments and evaluating those comments. And for some, including actually those, those issues, those items in our solicitation, having a very thorough evaluation of the proposals, making sure that they met the needs and our requirements, and then initially awarding those contracts. Diane, looking at almost 20 years of reputable service with NITAC, the latest count to date, almost $18 billion in obligations across these comprehensive GWAC vehicles, and recently better than 20% year-over-year growth, an outstanding legacy of your leadership and a lot to look forward here. Thank you for sharing your objectives with us, Diane. Thank you, Todd. And I also want to say that it's not just my leadership, but that I'm supported by a top-notch team. We hope you've enjoyed this special NITAC presentation. If you have questions or feedback about this webcast, feel free to visit us on the web at www.nitac.nih.gov, email us at nitacsupport at nih.gov, or call us toll free at 1-888-773-6542. For Diane Frazier and the entire NITAC team, I hope you'll join me soon for another episode of NITAC Now.